everything that I can. But sometimes I come out as being nothing. I pray to God that he make me a better man. <sighs> Maybe one day I'ma stand for something. Feels good to be back. Tell me What is up, everybody? This is Kevin at Boys underscore 22 with the Triple Play Fantasy Network. And on today's episode, we're starting a new series. And what we're going to be looking at is the top 25 college football teams and their Devi and C2C assets. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the 20, top 25 teams in, in college football this summer, kind of go through assets, looking at ADP, highlights, freshmen, next year's recruiting class, because it's never too early for my Debbie degenerates out there to look at what we're going to be looking at next year. And I'm excited about that. So Without further ado, what we're basically going to do is we're going to start with Alabama. Why not? So our Debbie breakdown of the Alabama Crimson Tide, and we're going to be looking at this team, which is loaded with talent. I don't know if you've heard uh, that they're pretty damn good at football, and they've really accumulated a lot of assets and Debbie assets. And it's I think it's harder for Alabama. The thing is, is like who's going to break out? Who's going to get that playing time opportunity that we like to see? I think that's the harder part. We all know that they have great talent there, but can we see, okay, who's going to be that next great star there? Now, let's take a look at the schedule. So we're going to do this for each team that we go over. You know, they're typical SEC. You know, they're playing New Mexico State, Mercer. I really am excited about the Miami game. Uh, I think they win pretty easily, but that's going to be a fun game to see there, especially if my guy Jake Garcia starts there. Uh, if you go down the list, Florida will be fun. Texas A&M is that college station. That's the game. That's I think that's the key game for their series. I think Texas A&M has sneaky playoff potential and SEC potential, and I think they could take them down there uh, depending on, on talent. But, again, Alabama is still one of the best teams in the country. If Bryce Young is who we think he is, then I don't know if that game is going to be a big, big miss for them. But there's their schedule. So as you can take a look, and obviously Auburn, Arkansas, those players, LSU. They're, I mean, they're SEC. We we're talking about this. Now, when we're talking about Debbie assets and what we're looking for, so let's look at the depth chart breakdown. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go through each, each position – Hey, where are they going in ADP? Where are they going? What assets are they looking at? Watch some film on these guys and just kind of break it down. Uh, now, if you want ADP, go to Campus the Canton. Uh, it's, it's a great resource, great people. Some of the best people in the fantasy and Debbie community are running that site. Uh, I can't say enough about them. So that's where I'm getting my ADP from. But that's where I really just I enjoy talking football with those guys. So definitely check them out if you're on social media as well. So let's start with the quarterbacks. Obviously, Bryce Young, right now his ADP is going as QB4, round six. So I've seen a slight drop with Bryce Young. So to be completely honest, uh, at the beginning of the offseason, I saw him going pretty high pretty high in terms of Debbie drafts. Like he was going four. Now I've seen him go, or excuse me, even campus can drafts. I've seen him go eight, nine, ten. So I think his value is dropping a little bit. I don't understand why. I think kind of the running backs have propped uh, him down a little bit. Some people have taken B. John Robinson from Texas, uh, Gibbs from Georgia Tech. Uh, Tank Bigsby. So those guys are kind of pushing his ADP down a little bit. And I understand why, I guess, if you're looking for running backs, but Bryce Young is still a hell of an athlete. Uh, you know, him and DJU from Clemson battling last year in terms of like where they were going to go, top recruits out here in California. I actually got to watch these guys play. Uh, after that, Paul Tyson, he's second on the depth chart listed, but he won't be for long. Jalen Milrow is there. He's going as QB48 in C2C leagues. Uh, he's a guy to take a shot on, I guess, if your C2C league is pretty, pretty deep. Uh, but really, it's Bryce Young show. So let's, Let's take a look at Bryce. Now, Bryce, six foot one ninety four. This is his prep stats, and this is just—it's just stupid. Okay, what what he did? Thirteen thousand yards, one hundred fifty two touchdowns, has a thousand rushing yards and twenty six rushing touchdowns as well. That's what he did out there in modern day of Pasadena. Again, per, perennial school, great program. What he was able to accomplish there is bar none one of the best high school quarterbacks that we've seen in a very long time. Now, let's take a look at his spring game. So, the thing about Bryce that stands out to me is his release. Uh, you'll notice it when he throws the ball, his ability to get the ball out quick, his ability to make reads. He's actually a pretty good quarterback when in terms of just his progressions. I think that's good. He has high football IQ. So the biggest thing about me when I watch him, Bryce, 
just right there, steps up in the pocket, finds his read. He knows where he's going, gets the ball out quick, and then they score a touchdown. I mean, that's where his 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 bread and butter is going to be. Now, watch this throw. Now, I'm going to I'm going to go back and we're going to look at it again, just because I think this is what sets him apart a little bit when we talk about him. His ability to get the ball to the outside ed- at numbers out there on that side and be able to get across the field. This is a long throw. You see where he's at in terms of hash marks on the other side of the field. His ability to get that ball out quick to his target, that is what I, I swear every time I watch him play, I know everybody loves DJU. I love Bryce, man. His ability to have that rushing upside that we've talked about, and you'll see it here. Step up in the pocket, find it. Obviously, not going to get hit. It's a spring game. Saban will kill somebody. But he's able to get the ball on target, steps up in the into the field quick, and he delivers it to his guy. So when we're looking at Bryce, I, really in real, reality in Debbie Leagues right now, you're going four quarterbacks. You're going Hal, Rattler, DJU, and Bryce. After that, there's a big teardrop, depending on what you think of Slovis, Corral, uh, Willis, these other guys, but Bryce is right there. He's a he's a need to draft asset if you're in that top six and he's there. And if he falls a seven or eight, you're grabbing him. I don't care what you are out there, you're going to grab this kid. He has rushing upside, Konami code kind of things. He he has that. He never looks flustered in the pocket. He makes good decision. Doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. He's a very solid, solid quarterback option. Now there are some things that he needs to do a little bit better. You know, when we're talking about kind of where his area of weakness is, I guess. I think he has improved his touch and accuracy on his deep ball. We just need to see him play, right? So Bryce is the biggest thing we're going to see him play there. But if you want a winner, if you want an IQ guy, you want a guy that's going to lead your team, Bryce is the guy. So for me, I, I'm taking him. I, I have Bryce in a lot of my leagues just because I saw his upside and coming out of high school. He's one of the most highly decorated high school players in college, in, in high school. And then he came into college football. He did some behind Max. Some people have been using that as a, I don't know, as a bad thing. Like, hey, Mac Jones just got drafted 15th in the NFL. That's not necessarily that bad to be sit behind him and what he did. And you learn from him. All right, so let's take a look at running backs because I think this position group is a little bit more challenging. So you have Brian Robinson Jr. He's there. His ADP right now is 113, running back 41. Chase McClellan is there. That's my guy. So Chase, Chase, is, someone, Chase is someone I want to get. So Chase is someone there. His ADP is 22.79, running back 9. Then you have Roy Dale Williams. Trey Sanders, Kyle Edwards, and then you have freshman stud, Kamar Wheaton. And we'll talk about him, but he's definitely someone, if you're kind of rebuilding, younger team in a, in a Debbie league is someone I would grab as Kamar. He, he's an absolute load. Uh, but let's talk about Chase, because I, I think Chase is the guy that you want to own. 5'11", 212, he's kind of gotten pushed down of the because of what Najee did last year and he didn't get a lot of playing time. He was one of the highly most highly decorated running back recruits out of high school last year. But then you see Gibbs, Tank. All these different guys, Bijan, come out because of the playing time they received, and they kind of jumped him. And I think that's kind of a mistake. Um, he, I think he's a value right now when you're looking at where he's going. So in 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 kind of leagues right now, he's going around. He's going after Kylan Williams. He's going after. I, I can understand Zachary Evans because I'm a big Zachary Evans guy, but I still think that he you shouldn't be drafting Ky- Kyron Williams over him, especially if after we just saw what the league thinks about guys like Kyron Williams. I like Williams, but but the size is the discrepancy. I feel like McClellan's going to get to 220. If he does that, they're going to be going after him. I mean, that's that's a that's a key key number for me. And, and that's where I, I kind of have with him is like, hey, you can kind of draft him at the later second round third round, that could be a running back one option that you have. Imagine pairing him either with Bryce or with DJU or Rattler or Howe, and then you get McClellan. That's huge for me. Uh, that, that That's kind of where I'm going with him. Now, let's watch his tape because I think it's important to watch him. He has explosive plays here. One cut, he goes. No, So he's more of a one-cut runner. He's light-footed, though, and he has initial burst out of the butt. Like, he can hit that hole quick. You'll see it here. I love his patience on this run. This is probably my favorite run of his. Patient, patient, patient. And then you see the burst, right? Like when you watch this play, I think that's what sets him apart from some runners. Here he is. He's patient, sees it, hits the hole quick, and he's gone. This is something we're going to see this year. Now, I think he does split time a little bit with Robinson. So as far as a C2C asset, I think you got to temper your expectations here. He's he's a better Debbie asset for this year. Next year, he's going to be great, but he's someone that you're going to have to grab and just hope he breaks out. And we know Saban. He's going to take talent. And if you watch here, McClellan has plenty of talent. 
again, hits the, hits the edge, strength, boom, gone. I mean, you can't not love what you see from his tape and what he did. He played in a, you know, the Texas Class 5A, so it wasn't like he was not playing at a power school. He did this against power programs. There's a reason why teams wanted him to come. Every team in the country wanted him to come. And he just has strength. And this is, again, one of the runs I like to see. So for me, I mean, he's, he's there. Now, if we're going to mention, and I always like to mention, like, hey, there are some things that we need to see more from. One of the things is, and I think speed is a concern for some, not for me, but it's pass catching. He's got to do it in that in that dual threat. Hey, can he be a three down back? Which I think he can. He's just never been asked to do it. When you watch him, watch him kind of play and what he's able to do. I think he had 200 receiving yards in high school. So again, he was a downhill runner, one cut runner. Alabama never really had him do that. I think he'll fit into that role though. And I think he'll be able to do it. So pass catching is definitely there. He has had some fumbles in high school that would definitely be a concern. So you got to watch that. Uh, but, you know, pass catching fumbles is there. But as a runner, pure runner, he's my guy. So McClellan is the guy that I'm going to go grab in Debbie Leagues. I have already because I think people are overvaluing some of these other guys and they're undervaluing him be based on what he was in high school because he didn't get playing time as a freshman. Most guys don't get playing time as a freshman. I understand that. And I actually like that he doesn't have the wear and tear that some of these other guys have. Uh, I, I Think about it. B. John Robinson might have 200 carries this year, plus what he did last year. I mean, you're looking at wear and tear and these running backs. That's a legitimate thing. All my injury guys out there, I don't know if you're going to get mad if I say that, but that is true. Okay. Now, let's look at, let's look at wide receivers because this is, this is where it gets fun and loaded. Absolutely loaded. So, I would say it rivals Ohio State's best wide receiver crew in the country. Uh, and I know, you know, my guy Jeff Bell might might come after me about Ohio State. But, hey, here's let's look. So, John Mechie, the third, he's going as wide receiver 14. Slade Bolden's not getting drafted, but we're going to talk about him in C2C. Ba Javon Baker, wide receiver 52. Treshawn Holden, wide receiver 89. Um, IG, IG Hall. So, Hall's going as wide receiver 16. Jamison Williams, wide receiver 111. Uh, transfer. From Ohio State, Ja'Cory Brooks, Christian Leary, JoJo Earl, all these different guys that are going to be there. They're absolutely loaded at the position. Now, let's talk about two guys that I think that you should be drafting. So first is freshman Phenom, uh, and going to be freshman Phenom. I just put a, I placed it on him, so it has to happen. Um, Ajay Hall, 6'3", 195. Love his frame, first of all. Absolutely massive. Prep stats, 141 receptions, 2,600 yards, 33 touchdowns. This kid is just fun to watch. When you watch him, he, he's physical. He has enough speed to get by corners. He has athletic ability, he, ac acrobatic catches. And I think that his ability to catch just sets him apart. So let's take a look at his spring game because everybody now knows about him and it pumped up his ADP a little bit. But, I mean, first of all, his ability to make acrobatic catches and just go up and get the ball is what's going to set him apart. We see it here, his ability to kind of separate – uh, excuse me, not separate, kind of a 50-50 ball, get up there. And he can separate. It's just one of those things. He can he can pull away. Now, the funny thing about him is, and I think that his potential hasn't been reached yet because he's still raw as a prospect. He can catch. He can do all the athletic stuff. His route running and stuff needs a little bit of a work. But just think about that. It's like the analogy of baseball. And I'm going to throw baseball out there a little bit since we are triple play. When you get two guys that run the first base, one guy is perfect form and one guy that doesn't have perfect form, but they get there at the same time. You want the guy that doesn't have perfect form because he can be even faster. Hall is that guy. He can catch. He's athletic. He doesn't have perfect form yet. His route running needs work. He's always gotten by probably on his athleticism. Imagine what he's going to do when Alabama teaches him how to use his skills to better himself. This guy's going to be a monster, everybody. I know people like Ja'Cory Brooks. Again, I'm a pretty big fan of Ja'Cory Brooks as well. But Hall is just someone I think is going to separate himself because his potential, we haven't even seen it yet. And he's already one of the best wide receivers that uh, in that room. I, I can guarantee it. That's how impressive he is. And again, here, his yak ability and his ability to kind of break away. Look at that speed. That is just fun. Like Hall is just going to be a fun guy to grab. He's the guy that I've been kind of targeting in a lot of my leagues. Uh, and, and when you look at basically where he's going right now, he's going as – Wide receiver 16. So it, it, it is a price tag. So let's let's be real. Like he's going as the second highest Alabama receiver and he hasn't touched the field yet. But again, going around that time, Jordan Addison, Julian Fleming, Josh Downs, DeMond DeMoss, who I like, but he needs to play. Emeka Buka. These are guys that like, hey, you know what? I'm okay passing on them and getting a guy like Hall because of his athletic profile, especially in Debbie. you got to grab these guys early because you got to build for that. And then wide receivers too. Hall's the type of guy that we're going to be talking about maybe next year as being wide receiver one of this class.
that's how high I have him and how, how much I love watching him play. Now, his next guy, next freshman, is a little different. It's so funny because you got Hall, who's 6'3", and now you got JoJo Earl, who's 5'9", 170. This kid is so much fun. He's electric to watch. I got to give a shout-out to my guy Felix Sharp from Campus the Canton because I know he loves him too. His prep stats, 149 receptions, 2,600 yards, 31 touchdowns, 827 rushing yards, and 15 touchdowns. So let's talk about JoJo because JoJo is someone who – is going to bring something different to Alabama that I don't know if they've actually necessarily have. I know they've had athletes, Ruggs, Waddle, these other guys, but he is so agile and his ability to run and, and be in the receiving threat is just a massive. His yak ability is just, I mean, look at, he's just guys, he's just toying with the finish. I don't know how you don't love college football. And I don't know how you don't love football when you watch this, his ability to line up in the backfield as well. Like, yeah, he's small, but his ability to make people miss in close quarters is just funny. His change of direction. He played at a Texas 5A school that was massive, massive school. So he's going against top talent at Texas. And that's what I love to see from my freshman recruits coming in. He, he can catch. And that's the thing that sets him apart. There's really, I don't see anything that's necessarily like like red flag to me. Yes, he needs to get a little bit more bigger. His I mean, his slight build is going to be a little bit there. But I mean, he's a ma he's he's an athlete. He's someone that in this today's NFL and what we're seeing in college football, he's going to put up massive points. I, I don't I don't necessarily think that he's not going to play next year. I think that we, when we're talking about him, I know that there's so much talent in that room. But when you have a special athlete on the field like him. I mean, guys, look at that. The, Saban's going to find a way to get him on the field, and, and I think that he he's there. He he has a he has an ability to kind of go in the return game. He tracks the deep ball well. Have you seen here? He can line up anywhere, versatile, slot, outside, inside. This guy is just a a football player, and I know that's a cliche thing to say, but when you get it to him, he's going to make guys miss and do there. So, and you'll see him here in the Wildcat. So, JoJo Earl is a guy that I'm I'm trying to grab as much as I can. But also just because of his unique ability. You'll see it here. I mean, no one's going to catch him here. He's out in the middle of the open field. Uh, and, and, again, he knows how to use his body well. And that's just that's just insane. So go draft him. This will be the last thing we watch of his. But, again, because of his upside and because I think that they're going to give him the ball in a lot of different areas, even, even in – the Russian attack, I think that he's a C2C darling. Grab him. Like, that's where he's going to be going. Like I said, when you look at where he is going, when you look at the the number here, he's going as wide receiver 20. So he, he has a little higher, too. Like, so when we're talking about this, but again, you're you're banking on, hey, can he be this guy? Parker Washington, Joe Nagata, uh, Zay Flowers, guys like that are going around him. I don't mind the JoJo Earl. You're gonna to have to wait on him though. So, but in Debbie, I'm taking him. And I'm gonna I'm gonna love as I watch him ascend to the top. Uh, especially in that in that in that in that SEC, he's going to be talented there. He's going to get the work that you're going to see, and 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 we've seen the NFL love Alabama wide receivers. So you should be thankful for that draft capital. You know he's probably going to get it. All right, now the next guy, the next position is tight ends. So if we're taking a look at tight ends, this is where my optimism kind of goes away just a little bit in terms of Alabama. Jaleel Billingsley is there now. Jaleel Billingsley right now is getting drafted as tight end four. That's a little too high for me. So his ADP is 92.46. And as far as I'm concerned, now before we go there, Cameron Lott was there, Major Tennyson, who a lot of guys like, is there. After that, it's really there. I mean, tight end position for for uh, for Alabama and for Debbie is, is, is definitely difficult. And you think it's hard in NFL fantasy. Debbie is even more. So let's look at Jaleel real quick. 6'4", 230. Not great stats last year. 20, 18 receptions, 287 yards, and three touchdowns. But he's athletic. He's there. I want him to get up his size a little bit. The 230 worries me a little bit. I don't necessarily know what position he's going to be playing in the NFL, right? So tight end wise, those type of things. Now, one thing I will say is this. When I'm looking at Jaleel, and we're going to watch his tape here in a second, there's guys that I, I don't mind waiting on and getting him them later. Theo Johnson is one of my guys from Penn State. Absolutely love him. I think that he's going to have a breakout year, or at least what we call breakout as a tight end position. He's going a little bit later. He's going almost two or three rounds, actually four rounds later. Grab him. Kate Otten, my guy. Kate Otten season from Washington. There's a lot of guys, uh, McBride from Colorado State. There's a lot of guys that you can grab much later that I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. And this is a reach. When you're drafting Jaleel that high, you're going to miss on a lot of wide receivers at that uh, level. And I'm not going to miss on those wide receivers at his ADP. Now, let's look at what he did this last year. Uh, and again, limited tape a little bit, but you'll see. I mean, he has yak ability. He has a versatility because he's going to be able to line up all over the field. So that's definitely going to be there. Um, 
again, he has good hands too. So nothing knocking him on the hands part because he does have to do that. He has pretty good route running too for a tight end. Um, so I do think he's an athletic guy. There's not, there's not that I don't like Jaleel. So I, I want us to make sure there's something that's clear. Like he's a very good prospect. It's just, I don't like where he's getting drafted. He's getting drafted a little too high for me. So in terms of Debbie or C2C, C2C, I don't think he's that major of an athlete because of like we just mentioned, all the guys that Alabama has, you're basically looking for a touchdown dependent tight end. And that's not what I'm looking for in C2C. I'll, I'll get that touchdown dependent tight end way later. Debbie, I don't know if he's a Debbie asset to me. Uh, I think he's a risk and I'm not, I, and there's already so many damn risk in Debbie as it is. I'm not going to waste that on Jaleel. I'll wait, take some other guys and just kind of plug and play my tight ends, especially if it's not tight end premium. I'm definitely not reaching for tight ends. I will say the number one thing I see, the mistake I see Debbie managers make sometimes is they reach on tight ends when it's not tight end premium. Don't do that unless it's one of the top guys. And Eric Gilbert's not even a tight end anymore. I don't know what he is. Uh, but if I'm not doing those things, I'm not I'm not reaching on there. So that's the depth chart. That's kind of what you have to look forward to. Now, let's go through some, some targets of mine. So some C2C targets that I'm looking at is, okay, first is McClellan because I think that he is legitimately going to be a very good asset for the next two years. Next one is Brian Robinson. We know that Saban leans on his running backs a little bit. We're going to see Brian Robinson score some touchdowns. He's not a bad asset to own right now. He's going as running back 41, so he's a good backup running back on your C2C team. I don't mind him. And in my my kind of sleeper guy is a guy that's going to piss off a lot of people in, in, in the in – the, Debbie community probably is Slade Bolden. So Slade Bolden's going to be playing wide receiver. Last year he had 24 catches, 207 yards, and a touchdown. He's going to be kind of a go-to guy. You saw it in the spring game a lot of over the middle, a lot of crossing routes, a lot of possessions. So you're going to see him be a possession receiver for Bryce Young, and he's going to get some catches. He's not a bad asset. He's literally going undrafted. I think I saw him going the 44th round of a of a draft that I went to. 44th round. 44th round. I mean, you can grab him, maybe a waiver wire ad as well, depending on how your waivers work in C2C, but he's a good asset to own. He's a guy that, hey, maybe I can plug and play him. Hey, I have some injuries, got some bye weeks. Hey, I know he's going to get seven or eight catches maybe this game, four catches, maybe he'll squeeze in a touchdown. They use him a lot of like different ways. And I know Saban loves him because I heard him talking about him during the spring game. When you listen to him, you can tell Bolden's going to be a guy that's going to get some play. He's not a bad C2C asset. He's not someone that's right now. He's a C2C asset. So you're not talking about him as a Debbie asset. But you could still use him there. Now, my must draft from these two teams, you should already know. Hall and Earl, those are the guys I'm trying to grab everywhere. Um, absolutely love their profile. And, and those two guys, I think, are the must draft. Now, I know Bryce is too. But based on price, you might not be able to get Bryce. So that's why I kind of mentioned those two guys. Maybe you can grab those guys in those rounds and, and adjust and do that. Now, what we uh, the last thing I want to talk about, because we are fanatics, degenerates, is the 2022 recruiting class. So as you know, Alabama's pretty good uh, as at recruiting and what they've been able to accomplish there. Uh, and now, so there's three guys that are hard commits that I want to talk about. Now, they have a lot of other that are not hard commits, but these are guys that are coming to Alabama more than likely. And that is Ty Simpson. Right now, he's the number three rated re quarterback recruit in the country. Emmanuel Henderson is the number one rated running back, depending on the Depending on where you're looking at, he's the number two ranked in Alabama. And then Le'Veon Moss literally just committed on the 6th of, of June. So, And he's the number five rated running back out of, Louis out of Louisiana, young man. So let's go over what each one of these guys has, and we're going to watch a little bit of film on them too as well. So let's start with the quarterback. So let's look at Ty. The thing about Ty is I actually think he's, he's athletic. So the thing about him, he's dual threat. He's able to kind of – extend plays and you'll see that with his ability there he doesn't really wow you with his arm strength but the thing about him is he can make a lot of throws like when you're watching him play like his ability to kind of throw cross body he it's interesting how he can get the ball out he gets it out pretty quick he's able to extend it very extend plays very fast he can throw around his everybody he's an elite 11 finalist He's on the roster. Again, watch him here. He's able to escape the pressure, get to the outside, and then cross-body throw. This is my favorite throw from him. Um, this is fun. So let's watch that again because we're having fun today. He extends the plays, gets on the outside, gets it across his body, boom, gets it to his receiver. That's what you'd like to see from your receiver. Absolutely just – or excuse me, from your quarterback and receiver. Nice catch out there, kid. But he's creative. I think he gets out. He can throw from different arm angles. He has toughness. He's going to stand there. He's a he's an amazing asset. And I know some people, and just look at that throw, okay? He's obviously able to escape pressure here. <clears throat> gets it out to that side. Gets on his platform. And that's the thing I like about him, okay? He actually gets his fundamentals there. He's not just throwing across his body. Tries to get as much platform as he can. Gets as much torque from his lower body. 
and he, boom, puts it on a dime. Absolute dime. So that's Ty Simpson. Keep an eye out for him. If you're in a Debbie league where you can draft – High schoolers, I know everybody's going to be drafting Ewers and these other guys. Ty's a guy, hey, remember Bryce is a sophomore. He's got one more year. Ty could be the guy that steps in and maybe go after. Now, the next guy is Emmanuel Henderson. Now, I like Emmanuel. You'll see him here. He's going to be able to get to the outside here. He's dominant. He's playing there. He's a long strider. He puts together a lot of different – He's strong and he's definitely fast. We love there. He runs consistently. He plays snaps all over the field and he's a pretty national pass catcher in his ability. Now you'll see him here. They get him out in space. The one thing I will say from everybody that says is that he's playing against small school competition. So whether I, I again, I've looked, Alabama seems to be there. So he's going to be playing against some other guys. He's strong though. And he's a guy that he has the ability to kind of take it deep every time. There's a reason why he's ranked so high in, in college football or excuse me, recruiting ranks. And you, I love his strength and his ability to kind of lower his shoulder here. Now, the next guy is Le'Veon Moss, and we'll watch him here. Moss is a, he's pretty young, typical for his size. I, someone compared him on 247 Sports, I believe, to Travis Etienne. So when you're looking at him, he's six foot 190. He's, he's very long speed. So, like, for him, well, this is my favorite run of his. His ability to kind of hit the hole and go, he's going to get it, and he has the speed to do it. So he has a very top-end speed. He has good acceleration. Uh, I think that he hits the hole hard with a purpose. So when you're watching him and what he's able to do, um, he's going to be there. The thing about Alabama and the thing that we have to worry about, we saw their running back room. These guys are absolutely loaded at the running back position. So when you're looking at running backs and, hey, can I take them? Yeah, you can, but you got to realize, like, some of these guys are going to be transferring. There's a lot of people. What I, one, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to track their transfers, especially with the rosters I have in the depth chart I showed you guys because we're going to see a lot of these guys leave. But I just wanted to give you guys an idea of the 2022 recruiting class and what they look like. So, yeah, Ty Simpson there. Le'Veon Moss, Emmanuel Henderson, so far, of the guys that are not hard commits, man, we're going to be seeing a lot of different uh, a lot of different guys coming in there. There's a lot of talent on that roster. Uh, you know, they have, I think it's like six or seven running backs. Branson Robinson, Relique Brown is going to maybe be going there. George Padaway, Jadon Blue is offered too as well. Um, I know Relique Brown's probably going to Oklahoma right now, but they're offered. So there's a, they have a bunch of offers out there right now like they usually do. Wide receivers, they're offering all over the place. They haven't really nailed one down yet there. So we're going to see Alabama be massive. But the reason why they haven't nailed down their wide receivers is because that class they have this year. It's it's Kids know that's that's kind of where we're going. So let's take a look again just at their depth chart and their ADP just in case you missed anything. So quarterbacks, Bryce Young, there we go. Running backs, there are their ADP, where they're kind of going at, what they're looking for. Wide receivers, there's their ADP, where they're going, who you should be kind of on the lookout for. And then tight ends, Jaleel, Cameron, Major, but really it's Jaleel there, and we had those things there. So that is your Alabama Debbie breakdown. I appreciate you tuning in and watching. Again, we're going to be going over. I know a lot of guys probably know these guys already, but I like to add a little bit of film, a little bit of narration, and a little bit of scouting for you guys. We're going to be hitting up every single program in the top 25 and then probably some outside guys that I like. Uh, that aren't in the top 25s to keep an eye on. So our next our next Debbie series breakdown, team breakdown, is going to be on the Oklahoma Sooners, who are loaded as well, and we'll be taking a look at their Debbie assets. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Until next time, please hit that subscribe button. Let us know. Find me on Twitter if you have any Debbie questions. I'm here to help you guys, and I appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys.